all of the major game magazines and YouTube channels have done a worst game in the world feature, but some of those games really shouldn't be on those lists. Maybe it's the fault of the game, the hardware, or maybe just circumstance. The three games I'm reviewing today quite regularly appear on these lists, and for you lot, I've put myself through loading up and seeing for myself, are they really all that bad? Because today, new game reviewers are going to be looking at the Atari 2600 versions of E.T., Pac-Man, and the first game up, Double Dragon. Everybody knows Double Dragon. It's a side-scrolling beat-em-up set over loads of levels where you have to rescue your girlfriend who's been kidnapped. It was an arcade smash and ported onto loads of system. But in 1989, Activision decided that we all needed an Atari 2600 version of the game. And the first question you've got to ask is, why? Who decided that was a good idea? Anyway, into the game, the one button control on the Atari make it difficult to pull off those combos. You press it to punch, you press up and fire, does a kick, you hit someone behind you, but that's all pointless. I suppose it does give a good try at playing the theme tune, and I suppose the garage door looks like the famous opening scene, but when I'm commenting on the door being good, you know we're in for a bumpy ride. I've played some hard games in my time, normally due to complicated level design or taxing puzzles, but this is hard just because it's rubbish. The enemies are relentless in beating you up, you can't get away. Your hits take ages to kill one of them and you'll lose most lives before you get past screen 1. Then it's onto screen 2 for more of the same. I'd, I'd love to tell you what happens next, I really would, but I can't get past this screen. I'm betting no one can tell you what the later levels are like. No one can beat this game. No one. And that's down to the fact this game should have been nowhere near this console. The system had been dead for about 5 years before this came out, and it couldn't cope with what was needed to make the game playable in any way. I mean, nice try, but no continues for you, Double Dragon. Pac-Man on the Atari 2600 was released in 1980 to much fanfare. At last, the arcade smash was available on the Atari, and it must be amazing. Alas, not quite. The sprites flicker around the screen to the tune of an ear-splitting, munching noise. There's no music here, I'm afraid, and you have to eat all the pellets on the screen before the ghosts get you. There's no variation in the levels. Gone are the nice animations between the levels as well. Also, in this version, the ghosts all act the same. The maze doesn't look anything like the arcade original, and it must have been a massive letdown. However, I do have a soft spot for this version. It was the first computer game I ever played. Yep, it's not the arcade original. Yep, the fruit has been replaced by a block that bleeps when you get it. And yep, there's no music. Oh, and the collision detection is dodgy. I can't see why this game is not liked very well by many, but hey, it's my first game, and for that, I cannot hate it. Although, I will admit the later release Mrs. Pac-Man is much better. And lastly in this trio of games is E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Released in 1982, this game was so bad that it reportedly had three quarters of a million of unsold copies buried in a desert in New Mexico just to get rid. A slight overreaction maybe? Well, let's find out. Five and a half weeks a developer had. Five and a half weeks, and this was a one-man job. Howard Scott Warshaw was a man given the unenviable task and just remember that when we go through this, five and a half weeks he had. You control E.T. and it's his job to collect three pieces of a phone to phone home. They are scattered throughout the game in various wells. You have to explore these wells, collect the pieces and phone for your lift home. You've got your energy number at the bottom that depletes as you move around. If this gets to zero, Elliot appears to rescue you. There are FBI agents that get in your way and halt your progress. The game isn't terrible, but it's not good either. And then when you take into account that Atari paid what in today's money is $53 million for the rights to the game, and then give a lone developer such a short timescale to make it, you can see why things aren't good. And then you've got to add in the fact that because of the rush to get the game out, Atari didn't bother with testing the game with a select audience. It was released in September 1982 and it bombed spectacularly. Because of the hype of the game, the issues behind it, it is often the number one game listed when we talk about bad games. But it's not awful. But, I mean, I won't be asking for a remake anytime soon, but I have played worse games. And I suppose for a game that is cited as the cause of the video game crash in 1983, there's always going to be some bad feeling. But give it a go, at least once. Personally, I think Double Dragon is the worst out of these three games. 
and it does deserve all the hate that it gets. But Pac-Man and E.T., in my opinion, eh, not so much. Give them a go, see what you think. Well, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Noob Game Reviews.